I started becoming fascinated with the idea that you can give someone a sugar pill, a saline injection, or perform some false surgery or treatment, and a certain percentage of those people will accept, believe, and surrender to the thought that they're getting the actual substance or treatment. And they begin to program their autonomic nervous system to make the exact pharmacy of chemicals equal to the substance that they think they're taking. So then it begs the question, is it the inert placebo that's doing the healing or is it the body's innate capacity to heal by thought alone? Because that pill is a symbol of possibility. All it is is a symbol. Her, the doctor says, this is a great new drug that's gonna help with depression. And the person begins to think about the idea that they could get better. They're selecting a new potential in the quantum field. And then all of a sudden, a certain percentage of those people will get enthusiastic and theos, filled with God, inspired, optimistic. They start changing their emotional state. They're combining a clear intention with an elevated emotion, and they're changing their state of being. And all of a sudden now, I began to realize, do you need the sugar pill? Do you need the saline injection? Or can you teach a person, instead of putting their faith and belief in something exogenous outside of them, uh, that would do the healing to change their state of being. Can they just select the new potential in the quantum field instead of focusing on an unknown, focus on an unknown and revisit that unknown every single day until it becomes a known. And all of a sudden, you'll see people's depression go away, their anxiety go away, and they're not using the placebo any longer. They're healing by changing their internal states. The person doesn't need the exogenous or external substance. They can move into a state of being without it. So I thought, once I understood the mechanics of the placebo, I could teach this process even better, and, and in fact, you can. You know, you can't do a study right now, any drug-related study, without having a triple-blind placebo test. And placebos, just so you know, work any, they range from working anywhere from 10% to a hundred percent. Imagine that. So in a depression study, as an example, 83% or 81% of the people in a depression study that are given a placebo heal as well as the people that are given the actual antidepressants. Now, <laughs> there's brain scans to show changes in their brain before and after. It means then they're making their own pharmacy of antidepressants by thought alone. And it took them six weeks, eight weeks, taking that placebo every single day. Now this is an important point because most people think, oh, I did, I did the exercise or the meditation once and my conditions should go away. Well, even in the depression study, six to eight weeks of taking the placebo, every time they take the placebo, they remind themselves that they're gonna get better, they change their emotional state. Sooner or later, that becomes their new state of being. It may take people six to eight weeks doing the work every single day where they start noticing significant changes in their health. So I'm a pragmatist and if you're telling me something that's science-based, the question that I ask is how am I going to apply this to my life? So as people begin to gather this information, I now know that every time we learn something new we're making new connections in our brain. That's what learning is. If people can understand the understanding of the new sciences, quantum physics, neuroscience, neuroendocrinology, psychoneuroimmunology, the mind-body connection, epigenetics, all of those sciences point the finger at possibility. And if I can instruct them in a way that they begin to piece together the model, when I feel like they are, we're at a certain point where the comprehension is right, if they can turn to the person next to them and explain it in the workshop, if they can't explain it, it's not wired in their brain. But if they can explain it, they're beginning to install the neurological hardware in their brain in preparation for an experience. So then if I can set up the conditions in the environment and give them the proper instruction and, and allow them to surrender enough into the present moment, a certain percentage of those people are going to get their behaviors to match their intentions. And when they do, they're going to experience something new. And the experience then is gonna produce an emotion and they're gonna feel unlimited, and they're gonna feel whole, they're gonna feel invincible. The moment they feel that emotion, now they're teaching their body chemically to understand what their mind is intellectually understood. Now they're embodying the truth of that philosophy by initiating it, which means if you've done it once, 
you'd be able to do it again. If you can repeat the experience over and over again, you'll begin to neurochemically condition your mind and body to begin to work as one. When you've done something so many times that your body now knows how to do it as well as your mind, now you're mastering that philosophy and now you're in a new state of being. So we have to go from, from philosopher to initiate to master, from thinking to doing to being. And once you get to that point where it now becomes innate in you, becomes who you are, then you've memorized an internal state independent of the conditions in your external environment. That's when you begin to master your environment or master your life. I call somebody up on the stage with, that was diagnosed with breast cancer, colon cancer, diagnosed with esophageal cancer, I can go down the list, and they stand on the stage and they tell their story. And it's not that they look like a movie star, sports figure, they're not all buff, they're not all young, they're not all beautiful, just a common person. When you hear the story, how they did it, you hear about their past, you realize what initiated the disease. And then you emotional listen. trauma, maybe. Emotional trauma, one trauma, or two traumas, and then how they had to overcome the emotions from their past. Now think about this. The latest research in epigenetics says that it's the environment that signals the gene. Genes are like Christmas tree lights, they're turning on and off all the time. Genes make proteins, and proteins are responsible for the structure and function of your body. The expression of proteins is the expression of life. But if you're interpreting your environment the same way every single day, you're thinking the same thoughts, demonstrating the same behaviors, living by the same emotions, you keep the same genes on and the other genes off. Throw in the hormones of stress, which really downregulates genes to create disease. Then the question is, if the environment signals the gene, and the end product of an experience in your environment is called an emotion, if you live by the same emotions every single day, your body's believing it's in the same past environmental experience over and over again, and now you're headed for a genetic destiny. So then, can you signal the gene ahead of the environment? And the answer is absolutely yes. Because when you begin to embrace an elevated emotion and you combine it with a clear intention, and you're totally in the present moment, your brain and body don't know the difference between what's going on out there and what's going on in here. Your body believes it's in some experience in the external environment that's producing that emotion. And all of a sudden, the stronger the emotion you feel from an inward process, the more you pay attention to the thought or the image in your mind, you're creating a long-term memory. And all of a sudden now, you begin to downregulate the gene for disease and you begin to upregulate the gene for health. And that gene begins to make a new protein and that protein begins to make a new hormone or a new chemical. Or or, or an expression of, a, of, of something new chemical that is going to begin to affect other systems in the body. So, and that's what happens on stage. There's a lot of energy in the room. No, there's, there's that's what of, happens when a person finally breaks through. Right, and that can so, happen. That, well, that could, could happen in our event, but it could be a person who it took them two years to do it. Right. But the evidence suggests that acute that, conditions, our medicine is so great for acute conditions. You break your arm, you have appendicitis, you're not going to go to an acupuncturist. You're going to get immediate care. Chronic conditions require a lifestyle change, which means you have to start making different choices. You've got to start examining the way you live your life and the choices you make and the thoughts you think and, and how you manage your emotions. So the beauty behind all of this is that just like an infection spreads amongst the community and creates disease, once people start breaking through and they wrap their mind around this, health and wellness can be as infectious as disease, and we're seeing it happen. The moment you start feeling grateful, <laughs> your, your healing begins. The moment you start feeling worthy and abundant, you're generating wealth. The moment you start feeling whole, you know, your healing's beginning. The moment you're in love with yourself and you're in love with life, you're going to create some pretty important relationships, and now you're causing an effect. So, don't get up from your meditation until you feel connected to your future. And then maintain that modified state of mind and body your entire day. Just independent of 